Um, damn, there was some, oh, the um, I wanted to ask you guys what y'all thought about the the Chappelle stuff, but before we gotcha. get to you all, yeah, um, I'll give my opinion. Um, okay. I, <laughs> let me ask your opinion, but let me give mine first. Well, yeah, yeah. First mine. Mine. First mine. Me first. Since I, since, <laughs> I since I brought it up, me first. <laughs> Dominicans me first. first. Dominicans first. Dominicans first. Damn fucking right. So, um, I, overall, I thought the SNL, I usually find corny as fuck, but it was uh, slightly less corny. Um, I'll talk about the skits. I, I felt like the skits, and um, I know we spoke about it a little bit in the in the chat. It was like really a lot of fan service. I think it, Edwin put it nicely in, in our in our chat. He was like, it was like, hey, I'm reminding you, I did do the Chappelle show. Um, so you know, it was really good to just see some of the old characters and just kind of like chuckle. So the 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 intro he did, the monologue, is that what they fucking call it? Um <clears throat> I thought he um I'm a little conflicted with it. I thought he he played it smart in this case, and I feel like he he did a good job of like being in between with the comedy, like he shitted on, on, on Kanye and Kyrie, um, in a very like, you know, nice way. But he also pointed out like the, why can't, you know, you say this about Jews or why can't you, you know, talk about like Jews coming together, I guess is the, the, whatever, watch the fucking joke before I fucking get myself fucking canceled. So I thought that was, that was fine. But, um, my thing about it is that like, I saw, I saw, I think I saw, you know, some of the nuance that he was trying to get at with, with the joke. But I worry about other people maybe not seeing it and seeing like the um, him pointing out the whole thing about like, oh, well, you can't talk about, you know, a group of Jews seeing it, seeing that as like a, yeah, you're right. It's OK for me to, you know, shit on it more me, for me to be more of a Kanye or um, that's actually the only thing I kind of like worry about with that. But um I thought he 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 did I thought he did a good job. I guess it's kind of like the best way to put it. Like he did a good job of like, you know, being controversial enough, kind of clowning both sides a little bit. And um, you know, the other skits were, I think, you know, again, pandering to the fan base, uh, reminding everybody that I'm 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 Chappelle. I'm a Chappelle show. Don't, you know, don't forget that shit. And um, but yeah, I I'm I'm glad he took a br- a, a break from being homophobic. And transphobic for a bit, so you know. Finally, give me some motherfucking jokes, and um, I don't know if he's done with those. But thank you for giving me a fucking break. And yeah, that's it. You're a dangerous ass take, bro. You think I have a dangerous take? That was so Washington Heights right now. <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead. I right, go Ooh. for it, go for it. Um, Kanye's right. Kanye's right. Uh, I share. I share. <laughs> Kanye. I share most of the same sentiment. Um, he played it. He he played it like on the edge. He he does the same thing he does. He does usually played on the edge of if I step over this line, I'm going to be looked at this way. But I'm gonna dance right here. So that I'm touching on topics that are very controversial, but not enough to push the line. And then he said it himself. He he brought light to certain situations. Like, yo, dang, Kanye got in so much trouble. Kyrie got in trouble because if Kanye didn't say that shit, Kyrie would have been off the hook. And now he's losing ten tens of millions or whatever, whatever he's getting fined for because of Kanye's wilding. Like, let's beat up all. Let's beat up everybody that say the word that they shouldn't say because we're not gonna say it on this podcast because we're smart. I'm not getting caught up in that. I'm not getting caught up in that one. Um, the skits were, uh, but the monologue is really what did it. Um, and he he does what he does, and he brought the whole joke back, came back around. Like his his writing is is amazing. If, if he does write, maybe he Jay Z's it. But as a comedian, it's it's amazing. Jay Z's a fucking liar. Oh, he write. He doesn't write. He writes. You seen it? I don't, I don't mm-hmm. fucking, I don't know. I don't believe him. That's complete bullshit. You know who don't I write? I think that's just to sell the character. Bad Boney. Bad Boney don't write. Bad They're all liars. Daddy Yankee. Daddy Yankee. We, oh, we, 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 we talked about writing parties. That's a whole, that's a whole thing with like musicians that, that like, I, I'll save that for another day. Um, but, um, I've noticed this with Chappelle because this is like his what second, third, fourth time hosting. 
um, versus seeing him in concert. He definitely has two separate styles. I feel like if this was like him performing at like Radio City, which is why I saw him, or him performing at Madison Square Garden or wherever, a Netflix special, I feel like he would have gone, he would have really gone in. He definitely would have gone in way more if it was just, if he's in concert, it's whatever. Like, no holds barred. I think he was, uh, he still went in. It was still funny. It was, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I, like from top to bottom, I think I do. I do see Fab's um, point one hundred percent. I think that he definitely, for NBC purposes, was like, "All right, let me go in, but let me not go too in, because I want these. I want to be back on this show. Like I, I, I brought Black Star on NBC. Like <laughs> I want to be able to do that again in the future. Because if he would have gone DefCon Five, no pun intended. Like I don't think he would have like invited him back." Or it would have been way crazier, the, the the backlash. I mean, he's already a polarizing figure for a number of reasons, for the homophobic jokes and the transphobic and the xenophobic and just him being Chappelle. I mean, but I think that's part of the, that's part of the genius of, of what makes him great is he's just like, I'm just going to say it. Like, I, my, my my position in, 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 in is, is solidified and not just comedy, but just entertainment altogether with my show. And my years in the game, almost 40 years in the game. So he's just like, he's at that point where he, he, he's kind of like Snoop Dogg. He's just like, he completed all the missions. You see what I'm saying? Now he's just like, <laughs> he's you know what I mean? He's like a franchise mode in Madden. He's like, all right, I, I don't want the championship with my favorite team. Let me go try to win it with like the Browns or something like that. Some team that I'll never win. You dig? So, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the monologue because he's funny and he's a genius and he does have great writing. I know he writes and he does have a team of writers like like most uh, comedians um, on that top tier uh, level, you know, including Chris Rock, you know, what I mean, and and so forth. But uh, but I enjoyed it. But I definitely see how he uh, pulled the reins back. He could have gone way harder. That's facts. As somebody that's seen him in live, he could have gone way. He could have gone all the way in. But he definitely uh, he definitely uh, withheld. Wasn't over nine thousand, like seven thousand. <laughs> um, it was a it was a good monologue. He, you know, I'm just gonna sound like a broken record, but he kind of played, you know, the fence, the the role of the provocateur. You know, I think for him, he seems to value, um the ability to have discourse more so than whatever the discourse is itself. Um, I think that's, that's sort of like a, a takeaway. I didn't really have like a super strong opinion. It was, you know, it, it was, you know, I like, I like hearing them talk, you know um, it wasn't like ha ha funny or anything, but like um, I think, I think it was sincere. I think it was well thought out. I think, he he played the fence uh, in a way that will get him invited back, and um, but I don't think it, it didn't come across to me as disingenuous. Um, I think you know I don't know if he would have went quote unquote harder. I think if he would have went harder, it would have been like like an actual set, like you know it would have been something else. But I think for that, um, I I think. You know, I think it seemed earnest, it seemed appropriate, it seemed well thought out, and um, the sketches themselves, and I was never a Saturday Night Live fan, like occasionally, out of the blue moon, they might have a funny skit or two, like I think they remember, I can't even remember the exact skit, but I think Bill Burr was on it, that was like the last skit that I remember, like, okay, this is a funny skit, I think it was like, when he was like a, a dad or something like that. Like a Boston dad and his son, they were getting in a fight. They're like that was pretty funny, but other than that, it wasn't that good. Mad TV's better. He's taking it all the way back. Mad TV. Are we tearing? Are we tearing up SNL? Because we could dive into how trash SNL is as a fucking show, bro. That shit is dirt. It's definitely falling off. I know they have to meet. Definitely falling off. Speak. They definitely have to meet. Um, falling off. It was never on. I know they have to meet a certain space. It was. Oh, it was on. Like though that. 
It was on. This guy's we watching. Born. This guy's watching the Richard Pryor reruns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the seventies. From the seventies. Watching fifty-year-old clips. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> bro. When Eddie Murphy was on there, what? I Man, have I the best. I was Forty years old, bro. Or well, like honestly, um, how how he, funny? He, can he's you on be? the leather pants there. How, how funny yes, and exactly. creative can you be if you have to deliver a show? Every fucking every Saturday? Week. That panders that panders to the broadest audience. What do you mean, DK? The base is hilarious. No, I, so I, we, I we see. We pander to the chosen ones. <laughs> no, I'm I, I, hold, I. I'm gonna hold this up the whole show. I, I see what <laughs> you know. Yeah, it is hard to kind of make a show, but a lot of people like SNL, so I guess. I think it's just the commentary. It's like it's just the commentary about like. American culture at that time, and I think, like to me, I I, I like watch it as like background. Yeah. I watch Weekend Update, but like, it's like water cooler talk, bro. Like, I think I think like it's such a, a wide audience. Like, you have so many people. I say like a lot. I hate that. They ha- they have so many people to reach out to that they gotta kind of water it down. They gotta do these little but, funny jokes. But I think it does a good job of doing. <laughs> my fault, Fab. So. Because I, I, I want to ask you, so like, I feel like political commentary is kind of like, you know, it's bread and butter, right? Like political and like social commentary, like making fun of like, you know, what we do. And can you, do, I, I feel like it does a good job of doing that, even though it's not funny. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I guess that's the point. Because that's what I watch it for, for like the silliness that it, it like points out about like, I guess, American culture. And it's just background noise and water cooler talk, but it's not funny. I go to TikTok for my comedy because there's actually a lot of good stand-up comedy on TikTok, believe it or not. Dang, bro. I oh my god, he just he just hit the cry button. Yeah, bro, he's not even He just wants me to do this. Maybe uh, shark. Uh,